All right, hello everybody. So I remember being quite confused on how to implement a neural network from scratch. So perhaps these couple of videos will be of some help. The, the idea is that we, in this video, go through some intuition behind the calculations uh, for a neural network and important notation that we'll use in later videos where we'll go through forward propagation as well as backward propagation. Um, and lastly, we'll do an implementation of a neural network from scratch in Python using NumPy. So these videos assume that you know calculus, uh, linear algebra, and also that you know the basics of a neural network. So for example, you know what uh, forward uh, propagation is uh, and backward propagation is, uh, at least an, an idea of what it is. You don't have to know the calculations for it, but just the idea of what it is. And as well as uh, you know that what softmax is. So these videos will be more practical on how we actually implement it. And so I assume that you know the basics. If you've never heard of neural networks before, but still want to learn, I will post some uh, great videos by 3Blue1Brown that will, uh, that will help you build an intuition and understanding of what neural networks are and how they work. So let's get started. So first of all, we have, I've written a quite simple uh, neural network here. So we have an input, uh, some type of data that we send to our network. We have some type of hidden layer that does computation and we have some type of output from our neural network. And the, what we usually call is that the first one is called layer zero. Similarly, the second layer is called layer one. And the last one will be layer three. Oh, sorry, layer two. Okay. And uh, well, what's important here is, and while I'll try to be quite specific and try to explain it as best that I can, is the notation that we'll be using. So the, the output from a particular layer, I will denote as A. Okay, that's the output from a layer. And the thing here is that each layer has several nodes, right? So from this hidden layer, for example, we have several outputs. We have five nodes. So to try to be specific in which node I'm referring to, I will write a J to refer to the J node, where this one is the first node, second node, third, fourth, and fifth node. And to say which layer I'm referring to, we write in brackets L. Now let's exam let's uh, take a, take an example that we have handwritten digits. So we have ten images of handwritten digits from zero to nine. And let's say that the we have sent it into our network, and the calculations for each of the images are different, right? Because the pixels, the input that we send in, are different pixels. So one can imagine that it does different. Uh, computation depending on the input. So what we have to do also is that we need to refer to the ith training example or the, the specific image that we're sending in. Now I, will, I won't be referring to the specific training example. I will just assume that we're talking about a specific training example and just write the L layer and the jth node. So let's take an example of A a let's say one and node two. So we know that we're in layer one and we also know that we're in node two. So what we have is that we know that we're talking about this node. And uh, let's say we're talking about layer first layer, I mean layer zero. And let's say we're talking about node one. Well, we first go to layer zero. We look which is the first node. Well, this one. Now, one thing we have in between of the layers are weights. And we have them from layer zero to layer one, as well as to layer one to layer two. And we 
need to have some type of a notation to refer to these weights as well. So I will write W of a specific layer. Now we need to be careful because each node right here, each node has weights associated to every other node. So what we need to specify is from which node J to, to node K. Um, so specifically, which edge are we referring to? So some examples might make this more clear. Let's say that we have W of one. And so what we refer to when we say W of layer one, we mean the weight that connect layer zero to layer one. So we refer to these weights here. And also if you write, let's say J equals to one and K equals to two, then what we're referring to specifically is the no, uh, the weight or the edge from node one to node two. So this one. Okay, so now that we have some idea of what notation we'll be using, let's do a quick example. So let's say that, let's say that we take this portion, so this part of this neural network, and I'm just going to redraw it. So we have, we have one node, another node, and third node, and all of them are connected All of them are connected to a node. So, as we, uh, this is the purple that I uh, draw earlier on the other image that we had. So, we have weights. So let's say that. So these nodes. This is the node from layer zero and the first node. This is the node from layer zero and the second node, as well as this one to be layer zero and the third node. Now this weight here will be weight connecting layer zero to layer one. So we will say that it's layer one node and it's the one connecting one to, let's say that this is the first node. So one comma one, similarly, this would be one and two comma one w of one three comma one so well first of all i need to draw this a little bit bigger so let's see a lot bigger so let's say it's still one node so it will make sense just bear with me so all of them are connected to one node. And this node we can view as being in uh, split into two parts of its computation. So we can view each node as doing two parts of computation. Now the first computation will be that it will take each weight and each weight will just have a number. Each weight is just associated to, to some, some number. So let's say it's 0.1 or it can be any number so we take this weight and we multiply it by the value of the node that's associated with that specific weight now we take this weight and we do the same thing with that node we multiply them and lastly the third weight with the third node now what we do is that we call the result Z, which will be the sum of these multiplications. So we call it the sum J equals one to three, because we have three nodes uh, incoming and three weights incoming to this specific node. So we take W of layer one and it will be one, uh, no, let's see will be j comma one times a of zero comma j. 
Now there's one more thing in this part of the computation and we will have right here it will be a bias term. So it will be B of layer 1 and for this specific node which we will call 1. So the reason why I write the node here uh, where I write the arrow here to denote the bias incoming to this specific node is because the bias term can be viewed as local to the specific node. So it's always associated to this specific node. And the only thing that we do to the bias term is after doing this multiplication and summation, we add it at the end. So we take this bias term. Remember the bias term is just a constant. Now one thing one can see here is that, well, this is quite close to the form y equals mx plus b, right? This is, this is quite linear. This is a linear function. And the problem with this is that we want in our network to be able to, to classify quite complex patterns, quite complex data, and a linear classifier won't work. So what we have to do is some type of nonlinearity to our neural network and what it's called normally is an activation function. And there are many different types of activation functions, for example, sigmoid, tanh, and relu. And perhaps relu being the most common, uh, that's the one we'll, that we'll use. So what we do in the second part of the computation for this specific node is that we, um, so just to be very specific here, this is z of layer one for node one, okay? Just to be consistent with the notation. So the last computation of this node will be a of layer one for this specific one, which will be a relu, so the activation function relu of z, um, and I'll, I'll skip writing the layer and the node, but exactly the same as this one. So what we'll do is that the, the relative function is a quite simple function actually. It's the maximum of zero comma z. So what, is, what, is, what does it do? Well, it takes, if, if z is greater than zero, then it will just pick z. If, it's le if z is negative, anything less, less than uh, or equal to zero will be set to zero. So literally it just lets uh, everything pass through if it's not negative. If it's positive, it lets it pass. If it's negative, then it's set to zero. So now that we know the notation uh, and some basic intuition behind the calculations, we can get started with the more complex uh, in the next video for forward propagation as well as backward propagation.